Okay, we are going live, and we are going live a little bit early today. A little bit early. Let me get up another video here. You might hear it start playing. And I will pause it as soon as I can, just to have this in the queue, ready to show. And this is an early like, that's emergency my go -to broadcast. That's my go-to sidearm. Browning 9mm high power. The okay, one's made in Bell. Pause this. All right, good. <clears throat> We're all spooled up and ready to go, and let me uh, actually get it on the iPad here, because this is an emergency broadcast at an early time, and this is an early... And Jaden is in the house. Jaden's the first one in the house. <clears throat> Jaden, did you get a... Um, did you get a notification? Let me know how the notifications are going out. And did you get a notification when I scheduled this or just now when I went live? It'd be interesting to know what YouTube is doing these days. They're capable of doing anything. So, <clears throat> this is an emergency intervention. <clears throat> I've had a couple of comments here recently uh, that show that somebody has poor judgment and poor taste so we're gonna to have to intervene on that you know we always like to help folks out on this channel anytime we can and meanwhile here's the 002 on wrist oh I've got to get the um, the faux pay got to put the faux pay on wrist what am I thinking The uh, faux pay is on the thumbnail, so I should certainly have it on wrist, <laughs> the stunning faux pay. So <clears throat> the reason, um, pull this chair in a little bit more here, <clears throat> the reason I'm uh, having this live stream is someone put some comments about the 002 and some general watch related comments that need a little bit of dissection and a little bit of the discussion and hopefully he'll watch this I did respond back but um, you can only do so much in comments right better to have a discussion he should actually join one of the live shows and we could hash this out in a live show <clears throat> use of this is an emergency broadcast no it's not five o'clock this is an emergency intervention broadcast <clears throat> based on some comments that happened earlier today on a, one of my videos. <clears throat> so we're going to get into it. Um, Craig was talking about boomsticks, the third rail of YouTube monetization. Boomsticks. What's that? Do tell. All right. <clears throat> Let's get into it. No sense sitting on this. This was the video in question that the comments came in on. The billionaire watch, Michael Saylor. We talked about his platinum Rolex Date 840. And so I'll find a couple of the comments here and I'll cut to them. Okay. <clears throat> And actually, this is an interesting comment, too, so we'll deal with this. Let me get it on the screen here. <clears throat> uh, Lee, and this isn't the intervention. This is, this is just a separate comment. Lee says, I'm sure he has 20 Rolexes. I have 10 Rolexes, and I'm not even a billionaire. He's talking about Michael Saylor, who owns the Date 840 in Platinum. And I said, or maybe he bought a nice watch and is wearing it. <laughs> In other words, maybe it's just a watch to him, right? He's not a watch collector, be my guess. And uh, and then and then Charles, who is the subject of the Charles C H A R L, 
Moore, M-O-O-R, who is the subject of the intervention. He said, um, stick to one for life, build a special piece from having such a personal watch. Two or three ruins it. Look at Jack Nichol Nich Nicholas with his beautiful story. In other words, he had the day date that was gifted to him and he wore throughout his career. Well, you know, that I agree having one nice watch and wearing it for your entire life is a good thing, but I think he's a poor example because he was given it <laughs> given it by Rolex and he basically had a deal with them. He was promoting Rolex the whole time. He was in advertisements for them and so on and so forth. So that's kind of like a paid gig. So I would say that probably doesn't count. <laughs> Just saying. Okay, <clears throat> so let's get back to the comments here. Um, da -da 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 -da. Where is it? Oh, yeah, okay. Well, anyway, I responded to him. And I said, if my eyes didn't get weak, I would still be wearing my 18238, my day date. <clears throat> now that I've discovered the quality and accuracy of GS Grand Seiko, I can't go back to Rolex, which we've talked about this many times. And Charles says, that's a fair, fair point there. The dress watches have contrast, but nonetheless, best to own one for life, in my opinion. Okay, so there you go. Okay, so now we're going to get to the comments that need in intervention. Now we're going to get to where he went off the rails a little bit. And by the way, this was an earlier comment to those others. He seemed to be more sober in those later comments, <laughs> more cogent. But here are, here are the comments that require a little bit of intervention. <clears throat> he says, quote, How have Seiko got someone to spend 15k on a gold watch head and leather strap total gold value on a 002 maybe 2000 of gold value and won't hold value and is very boring piece that could be confused for a $1000 Seiko okay so um, i replied to him well, well first let's dissect his comment here first real quick uh 15k don't know if you could buy an 002 for 15K. That would be a heck of a discount. So I don't think he's accurate on that. Maybe you could buy one for 20. I'm not going to say how much I paid for mine. I did get a very good discount, but uh, 15 I don't think would be doable. Uh, let's see. The gold value in 002 may be $2,000 of gold value. I don't think it's anywhere near that much. It's not an ounce of gold. An ounce of gold is like two grand, right? So there's no way there's a full ounce of gold in that watch. I don't know how much there is, but I don't think it's an ounce. So he's wrong on that, too. Um, okay, so then I replied to him. I said, I buy my watches to wear, not as investments. Watches are not good investments. I bought the SBGY002 because it's beautiful, well-made, and accurate. In my opinion, it's the finest dress watch ever made. And then he responded, let me click read more here so we can see it all. <clears throat> Please go to the Lange store and try and compare. I think everyone on your channel would r route, route you, would route for you, root, I guess that's supposed to be root for you, to get out of that place for something a bit more special that is similar cost and should wear also every day. So I guess English is his second language, but we'll, we'll grant him some quarter for that. No one is talking about not wearing every day, all day. It's a watch obviously used 24-7. Who doesn't wear 24-7 watches? Well, a lot of people don't wear their watch all day. A lot of these watch, quote, collectors hardly ever wear their watches, so I don't know what planet he's been on. I let my two-year-old use my Rolex as a bath toy, swinging it about, trying to hit the dogs with it, couldn't give a toss take it scuba diving and all other things that you do every day i see it like it was my old casio digital watch if there is someone who really does use a watch it's me lol he probably doesn't even have a decent watch so we'll go there so so then i responded again 
Lange can't match the accuracy and durability of my 002. Also, my 002 is more beautiful, not a close call. Remember, I my watch is to actually wear. So show me a Lange that's as attractive as this 002, and maybe we can have a discussion. <laughs> Don't think you're going to find it. So let's go back here. Um, <clears throat> then he says, for what you're doing, any watch will suffice. <laughs> Suffice, if you plan to bay base, play baseball in your watch or boxing, get a Rolex, obviously. Uh, okay, so, bought the wrong watch if durability was your main target. Obviously, he's not familiar with spring drives. They're very durable. Uh, should have got the Rolex that's tested specifically for durability. So is my 231 that's on the screen. Oh, I'm sorry, I wasn't showing it right there. So is my 231 that's on the screen, that was on the screen very durable. So there you go. Um, let's see. What a beautiful watch you don't want a beautiful watch you don't buy a Seiko. Well, again, the 002 is stunning. So I don't know what planet he's on. He should go look at one. A Lang A is on a different planet for the same money. Design is modern classic. Again, show me it. Show me the watch. We've looked at some. We've looked at competitive options and none came close to the 02. Not a design for any Seikos that are gold. Uh, the beauty can't be there on that watch. It looks like the $2,000 gold Seikos, all the same, similar, if not worse design. Don't see how you're blind to it. Um, why not go and try others on? Only live once. You talk about watches a lot. Uh, wouldn't it be interesting to, to go try competitors' offerings in person on wrist and report to everyone what you may... I've looked at a lot of watches. I've looked at a lot of watches at Steve's shows. I've, I've not been uh, under a rock. Uh, let's see. And then he says, I bet if you did a poll, please do it. Who wants the O2 replaced by Patek or Lange? Uh, read more. And this is going to come to an end here soon. I know this is boring for you guys, but Seiko O2 or Lange... Okay, uh, or Patek Philippe, Calatrava. We already, we've already talked about Calatravas end endlessly. Um, it will be misery for the O2, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so I responded to him clearly. I, I mistyped there. So say clearly your taste is different than mine to each their own. And then I, I also responded, sorry, but everyone who has seen the O2 in person has been amazed. Seen the O2 has been amazed. Uh, that said, I buy my gear for myself, not for others. In other words, not what the poll would say, right? The poll might say, jump off the building. That doesn't mean I'm going to jump off the building. And again, he says, uh, that's why I said make a poll, 1,000 viewers, and ask what is more beautiful, Grand Seiko or Lange, and I'll bet over 70%. Well, maybe those people don't have good taste, <laughs> right? Maybe they don't. Maybe they're clueless. <laughs> so there's that. All right, let me catch up on the comments. Ah, oh boy. I'm wearing another 70s era lapels on this cashmere coat, but man, it is so freaking comfortable. And on a cool day like this, comes in handy. He'd say, oh, that looks terrible. A terrible sport coat. <clears throat> Why would you wear something like that? That's fine. I, he's not wearing it. I'm wearing it. So there you go. Uh, and out and about in real life, very few people say your clothes are ugly or your watch is ugly. If they say anything at all, it's usually positive. And if they want to say something negative, they usually bite their tongue and don't say anything. So it's not like, you know, you're going to get chastised for wearing some watch out in public. Most people could care less. Uh, okay. Cheetown. The beauty of the day dates timeless is that Jack Nicholas could have worn a brand new one every year and we'd be none the wiser. And I think he did have work done on that watch over the years. I, I, I don't think it was all original. I'm not so sure that that watch was untouched for years because the bracelet was in really good shape. I don't know what the deal is with all that. And I'm not even sure if he actually wore it all the time. He probably did, but I, I don't know. If he did wear it all the time for that many years, there would be a lot of stretch in that bracelet. So something is something happened there, is my guess. 
uh, Chi Town. Most of us would easily mistake an $8,000 Rolex Submariner for an $80 knockoff. So saying the 002 like, looks like a $1,000 watch. So, yeah, I don't know, though, about that. I, I think it would be hard to fake this watch with a $1,000 watch. I, I think from four feet away, I could tell that there's something really special going on here. First of all, it's very hard to fake 18 karat gold. Plated stuff just doesn't look the same as the real stuff. And, and it's, it's pretty hard to fake something with, with this kind of overall quality. If you could, if you could make something with this overall quality for a thousand bucks, absolutely I would buy it. Solid 18 karat gold and in, in this kind of quality. Yeah, I would save money. I'd buy it. But I don't think anybody offers that, unfortunately. Um, okay. Uh, now, as far as um, steel watches, yes, it's a lot easier to fake a steel watch because steel is no big deal. So it's a lot easier to fake a steel watch than, a, than an 18 karat gold watch. There you go. Um, I've seen fake day dates, you know, that are plated and all, and, and you can pretty much tell. They never get the color quite right, and it just just doesn't have the depth. It just doesn't have the look of real gold. It doesn't play with the light the same way. In my opinion, and I've seen them. <clears throat> so, um, Blue says, I'll check back in later. He, he, he doesn't want to hear, he doesn't want to hear about the, the, the stupid comments. Uh, let's see. Cheetown says, I'm not a fan of the case design of Lange watches. They look like converted pocket watches to me. I prefer protect food. Yeah, I like the lugs to flow from the case. I don't like them to be welded on. And yeah, I, I, I'm not a fan of that design either. And, and we talked about the Calatrava also. I, I'm sorry. If I put my watch, my O2 next to a Calatrava, there are numerous things that I prefer on the O2 over the Calatrava visually it just there's there's just things that i much prefer the crown being one thing uh the uh side view of the case what the case looks like from the side view either way which is the way piece, people most often see the watches from the side like you're seeing it right now this watch is much more attractive from the side in my opinion uh than the uh the calatrava 5196 not even a close call um, let's see. Uh, most Langes are gargantuan and overly complicated for Craig's taste. Um, most people on this platform think a Patek Nautilus is beautiful, so these poles are not a good method for finding taste to cheat down in the house. Good point. Yeah, a lot of these people, you see the watches that they buy and that they post in the forums and so forth, and you can tell they don't have any taste. Uh, let's see, Jaden says, I don't think I will ever get the Nautilus or Royal Oak thing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's so many beautiful watches out there that you can buy. Why in the world would you buy one of those for that kind of money? Look at the beautiful watches you can get. I mean, for a sport watch, just buy a, um, let's see, you want to go name brands. Okay. okay. Buy a Yachtmaster. Buy a Yachtmaster, either with the blue dial or the, what's that gray dial called? What's the color? I'd buy the blue dial personally. Uh, my gosh, just buy that and call it a day. That'd be much nicer than having a Nautilus or a Royal Oak. Of course, a GMT Master. My gosh, you could pay way over retail and get yourself a Pepsi, right? For the for the money of those those watches, couldn't you get yourself a Pepsi? That would be preferred. Uh, day date greater than Nautilus every day. Well, yeah, absolutely. Just grab a day date and, and call it a day. You could do that. Rhodium dial, yes, yes. The rhodium dial is stunning, but the, I I would go with the blue. But um, yeah, there are a lot of options out there. For people that want to buy an attractive watch, you don't have to buy an ugly watch. Um, what else? Let me think. 
ba, 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 ba. Oh, the thumbnail for this show. Let me see if I can pull it up. <clears throat> da, 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 da. I'll go to the two, three, one for a moment here. See if I can speak of a speaking of a stunning sport watch, you could go with a two three one. My gosh. And just call that a day. Da, 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 da. I will find it. I will find the photo in question. Just don't anybody panic. Yes, here it is. <clears throat> Here is, here is the photo that we used for the thumbnail of this show. And tell me those are not stunners. Tell me those are not stunners. That is the SBGX, I think it was, SBGX 038 on the left, and the SBGY002 on the right, and of course the faux pay bracelet in the foreground. So yeah. And the 038 was shimmed up by a one ounce silver coin, a one ounce gold coin, and a one ounce platinum coin. We're shimming that one up so it was at the same level almost as the um, same depth from the camera as the uh, 002, using some shims there for the photography purposes. Um, let's see here. Uh, Railmaster, lots of GS options under 5K. Yeah, yeah, you get a Railmaster, get a GS, absolutely. So, Craig, any Capital Porsche Audi stories you can tell us? I think I told you one. <laughs> this was a funny one. Um, we had, a, there was a road called Cherry Hill Road off of Route 1 that went off of Route 1 and it had a pretty sharp turn in it. I think it might still be there. I don't know if it is. Maybe somebody can Google map it. This is College Park, Maryland. And uh, we used to go on test drives. We used to take the Porsches down through there to show how well they handled. And George Gallert, who was one of the top salespeople and God's gift to women, I mean, you know, he was like any woman that he wanted, he just like could snap his fingers, right? And so, I mean, he was like Brad, a real life Brad Pitt, right? So, um, Anyway, he, he, um, he took one of the Porsches and he went around the turn too fast. He had a, he had a, uh, a prospect with him and he lost it. And I believe it was a, um, was it a 930 turbo? I don't remember what, it was either a, a I think it was either a 911, just a straight 911, or it was a 930 turbo. But anyway, he went around the turn too fast. He lost it, and he rolled the Porsche. And the Porsche ended up on its roof. They were upside down, and he was facing his, the customer, right? And they were both strapped in. And he, and he looked over to the customer, and he said, um, Now, I've, I've demonstrated the torsional rigidity of of." of the body in a roll situation. So you have to buy now, right? <laughs> that was his line to the customer. I think the customer ended up buying, and the, not that car, of course, but I think he ended up buying. So that was pretty wild. That was pretty wild. And then, um, and then almost every night when the dealership would close down, <clears throat> I lived in Bethesda at the time. I lived at the Promenade Complex, which is right at Route 355 and the Capitol Beltway. I had a place on the 14th floor there. And I, I would, we would leave uh, and hit the beltway at Route 1. And then we would race to see how quick we could get around to Wisconsin Avenue. And because a couple of the other salespeople li lived that direction, one lived in Virginia and one lived, you know, back off of old Georgetown Road or something. So we're both, several of us were going that direction anyway, right? So we would race in whatever, whatever Porsche we had at the time. It's a miracle that we kept our driver's licenses. It really is. Uh, but back then they weren't, it wasn't 
quite as bad as far as electronic surveillance, especially at like 10 o'clock at night on the Capitol Beltway. You could kind of uh, have some fun here and there. So, yeah, we'd have some fun here and there with the with the Porsches for sure. Um, let's see. How much does your faux pay weigh? My AD uh, started selling faux pay, but they're too light, nine grams, perhaps they're ladies' mouth. Yes, that would be a ladies'. Um, I did weigh this. Where did I put it? Where did I put the information? Oh, I think I put it on the article. Yeah, let me let me pull it up here. Give me a second. I have a blog post that I published, and I believe I put it on there. I'll pull it up here, and we'll make sure. I think it's harryguides.com slash faux pay, but, but let me just make sure before I send you there. Yeah, here it is. <clears throat> Okay, so the URL is areaguides.com slash faux pay, areaguides.com slash faux pay. And then here's a whole write-up on them. And I believe I have the specs of mine here. Let's look here. Yes, this one is 36.30 grams, 1.280 ounces. It's the large size and eight millimeter in diameter so those are the specs on this particular watch so it's 36.30 grams 12.8 ounces 18 karat gold it's the large size so they have different sizes the large means the length of it so you want to make sure you get the correct length this one has some slop to it, which is the way I wanted it. Steve's has some slop to it, too. I might have been able to get the next tighter size, but then it would have probably been too tight. It's a centimeter difference between each size, a full centimeter. So this is really comfortable just like this. So I think I got, I think I got the right size for me. And, it, and it's easier to put on and off if it's not too tight. It, it'll stretch up to 30% of its length it will stretch in order to get over your hand. And what's neat is you roll it off. Like, I just roll it like this. <clears throat> and it comes on and off very easily. It's going to close up here. So, yeah, it's pretty, pretty cool. And what's neat about it is zero maintenance and the thing is guaranteed for life and zero maintenance no latch to fail clasp i mean uh so yeah uh let's see here uh craig i sent you a photo of the latest hairstyle trend here in california for most males 17 to 25 okay we'll take a look at that uh that was one hell of a sales pitch Craig, did you prefer the 944 Turbo or the 928? The 944 Turbo was amazing. Amazing. I drove a 1986 944 Turbo back from Texas one time in 1986 and made record time. And that thing would run. That thing would run like nobody's business. But the 928 is awesome. So between those two, I would probably take the 928, uh, but the 944 Turbo is no joke, no joke. Uh, let's see, does the faux pay grab any hairs when you're rolling it off? No, it doesn't. It, 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 if you're fooling around with it and kind of stretching it and putting it back in like that, while it's on your wrist, you might catch something, but rolling it, no, it doesn't it doesn't catch anything. And most of the time, when you're wearing it, it you never notice it catching anything. I mean, occasionally you might feel it pull on a little something, but I mean, it's just a that would be the exception to the rule. It's usually very, um, it just kind of floats there. And I've got a lot of hairs to catch, so if I, if it was going to catch hairs, it would catch them on me. So, no, it's not a big problem. And, and Steve also, you know, has his share of wrist hairs 
and it doesn't. He says it doesn't bother him. He wears his all the time. I have to be honest. I don't wear this as much as he wears his. I wear this mainly when I'm wearing the 002. He wears his all the time, no matter what watch he's wearing. He's always got it on. <clears throat> Let's see here. Uh, what else? Are we caught up? Da, 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 da. And on, by the way, on this page, there are several videos showing a lot of close-up photos and all that kind of good stuff, and then links to more photos. So, uh, and I guess I can let the cat out of the bag. I did order uh, a uh, faux pay for Brianna. Uh, they're going to get it in at Little Treasury, and he's giving me a, a decent... Um, Sound just cut out. Well, it's not on my end. I'm showing indications here that it's up. Uh, let, can somebody else let us know in the chat if the sound is out completely? Because it's still indicating on the indicators here that it should be good. And but while you're doing that, I'm going to pull up this email. For the new hairstyles. And there are the new hairstyles. Well, at least I will, I will say this. At least they've got hair. So there's that. They've got the advantage of, um, of actually having hair. Now, what they're doing with it is another story. <clears throat> so, hey, if the chicks dig it, then go for it, man. If the, if the chicks dig it, I say go for it. All right, what else do we have going on here? Uh, boom. And again, that was the uh, thumbnail. That was the thumbnail that um, we used for this particular show. And I'll tell you what. I'm really tempted, really tempted. I don't think I'm going to do it. But I'm really tempted to put the 231 up for sale and just go 002 all the time. Just go 002 all the time. I'm tempted to do that, but then I find myself wearing the 231 and I really like it. And so, like, I'm like, ah, I've got two watches that I really enjoy wearing, right? That are both phenomenal watches. And so that's the quandary. That that that's a that's a legit quandary, right? When you guys say that's a legit quandary. Uh, Jeepu's in the house, uh, looking sharp, Craig. Well, thank you, Jeepu. That that comes on the heels of this gentleman making comments that <clears throat> claiming that I have no sense of style, no taste whatsoever, that I have no idea what I'm talking about. So I really appreciate your your supportive comment. <clears throat> Sebastian, uh, my first watch ever is a Grand Seiko SBGA 229. Well, there you go. That's the steel version of the 231, of the 231. There you go. Nothing wrong with that. He likes a little more heft on his waist, on his, waist, on his uh, wrist. So he went for the steel version. Hmm. <clears throat> So, uh, Craig, what was your first sports Rolex? I think it was the red sub that I sold to Paul Falpel that he still has. I believe that was the first one because my first, my first Rolex period was a date just with an engine turn bezel Jubilee bracelet. And that was in 1978. And then I think it was around 79 that I got the um, red sub. And then around 1980, I think I got my first date eight. And not too long after that, I believe I got my first uh, GMT Master. And then I had a couple of GMT Masters. I went from the sub to the GMT because the GMT is a little thinner. And I didn't really need the extra dive depth of the sub. 
So I went to the GMT and never looked back. I, I, I preferred GMTs as the sport watches from then forward. Uh, so I only had the one sub, and that was the red sub, which I sold to uh, Paul Fopel, which he still has. And I have a video here on the channel if you want to see that, if you haven't seen it already. <clears throat> but we'll play a little teaser. We'll play a little teaser of that. Let me see if I can find it. Give me a moment here. Okay, here, here it is. Here she blows. The red sub. And let's see. Oh, I'm going to have to skip this. So as you can see, it comes with a pair knife, a chef knife, and a serrated knife. So it's Friday, October 19, day one of Steve's big watch event. The big day is tomorrow, Saturday, the second day of the event. But I ran into a friend of mine, an old friend, Paul, who has a red sub that was made in the early 70s that I bought in the early 80s and then ended up selling to him and in around 1983-84 and he still has the watch how cool is that and I interviewed him he had the watch with him okay I'm here at Little Treasury Jewelers and I'm here with Paul Falpell say hello hello how are you doing and what do you got on your wrist there I have an old vintage uh, Submariner Rolex. They call the red Submariner. Right, the 1680. Okay, and you have the original bracelet, but you put another bracelet on? Yeah, it was due, due to some wear on that. I wanted to continue to keep it as uh, uh, wear-free as possible. Yeah. So. so how long have you had the watch? Let's give the backstory a little bit here. Um, you and I have had several watches where I've ended up with a watch and then somehow you've ended up with it? Right. You've, you've, uh, you uh, go through them more than I do. I end up keeping them after you've given them to me or sold them to me at a, at a reasonably good price. So. Yeah, so, so you have a strong hand. You hold. So let's right. go back in time. We were trying to discuss earlier, try to date this. We're probably looking at the early 80s. Yeah, the early 80s. So we're talking, you know, some good 30 some years ago. Yeah. And, uh, we're both getting older. Yeah, we sure, sure are. But you... And the first watch that uh, that that I remember you purchasing was uh, was a old, uh, as it appeared to be, a uh, old bubble back Rolex stainless, and uh, and then I acquired that from you several years later after you got tired of it and moved on to, I guess, the Ro uh, Submariner at that point in time, and then once again that fell into to my hands as well. So, and I've kept all of them over the years and continue to keep them. I also have a what an Omega Speedmaster that I got from you as well. That limited edition watch, it's super complicated. 125 uh, 1973 sub uh, Speedmaster as well. It was an anniversary watch, right? That's correct. Okay, we're going to pause this. Of Omega. So. Pause that. So you can, you can watch that entire video. It's here on the channel. Just search Red Submariner. And That's a Paul's beast a of a watch. Guy. Of course, by today's obviously, standards, well, it's stop this huge and heavy. Obviously, a very old friend of mine and uh, still lives in the Annapolis area, has a place on the water there, nice boat, so on and so forth. And so he was at uh, one of Steve's events. He just happened to, uh, I think I might have mentioned on Facebook that I was going there or something, but in, anyway, he, he happened by there. Because obviously he likes watches, and he he wore the red sub, and I, I recognized the red sub. I said, "Is that the red sub?" He said, "Yeah, that's the red sub." And so I said, "I got to interview him about the uh, red sub." So that's kind of cool that he's kept those watches all these years. Uh, Robert says my first high end watch was the SBGV005, which I love. Just bought an Omega Speedmaster Racing white dial. I wonder if it will click dust since my GS is so good. That can happen. You can get spoiled by the GSs. Uh, he kept it in really good museum condition. It's about in the condition it was when I sold it to him. Yeah, he's kept it just as nice as it was. It, I mean, it obviously had a lot of use. It was a used watch when I got it, um, and it had a lot of use. But, yeah, he, he took care of it. 
Isn't Paul also a Porsche guy? Yes, yes, he has a, I think he's down to one Porsche now, uh, but he had a 928 and then he had a 944 and I don't know which one he has now, but I, I went to a Porsche club meeting, not meeting, a rally or whatever at the Naval Academy uh, uh, Stadium and shot some photos and a video there. Those are on my channel too if you search Porsche. And I think one of his cars was there and, and is featured in the uh, video. So yeah, he's a good guy. Uh, let's see. Uh, you never told us about the Speedmaster. Yeah, the 125th, that, that big bulky thing. Whoa, geez. I wore that thing a couple of times. And I was like, and it had an integral bracelet, uh, you know. But I bought it cheap. And that's the only reason, is I bought it cheap. And it was kind of cool because it was complicated and it was in mint condition because whoever bought it, uh, obviously, before me didn't wear it either, right? But whenever I would say, I've got a watch I'm going to sell, Paul Falpel would say, okay, <laughs> I'm here, right? He'd take it, he'd get it. I, I think I only sold four watches to him over the years. He acted like it was a whole bunch, but I think it was four watches. I think it was the bubble back, maybe only three, maybe the bubble back, the sub, the Omega, was there one other? I think there was something else. Now I can't remember what the heck it was. There was something else. But anyway, at least those three. Um, so, let me think what else. I think we've done all the interventions we can. Dust on my coat. I think we've done all the interventions we can here. I think we maybe straightened everything out. What do you guys think? You think we've straightened everything out? Uh, let's see. Craig, how do you think that Speedmaster dial would be treating your eyes today? Well, I mean, it has good, it's busy, but it has good contrast to it. And it's a decent sized watch. I don't think it would be too bad. But again, the watch was, was not comfortable on wrist. It was kind of clunky. It was very squared off and it was um, heavy and it had that bracelet that integral bracelet that really wasn't that flexible. I mean, <laughs> the only reason I bought it is it was in mint condition and it was very reasonable. I paid cash, right? I made a low ball cash offer. You know, sometimes you make a low ball cash offer and you're kind of hoping that they don't accept it, right? And then they say, okay, I'll take it. And then you're like, damn, I should have gone even lower, right? <laughs> that was one of those watches. Uh, there's two watches that I really made low ball offers on over the years. And the, the one was the white gold date eight that was at an AD and he had had it for like three years in his window. Couldn't sell it. Nobody would buy it. Nobody wanted a white gold date eight, right? They all wanted yellow gold. And so it was sitting in his case, brand new. And it was the price from three years previous, right? He hadn't raised up the retail price. It was marked on the ticket, the retail price, and he didn't change it, right? So it was already a three-year-old price without price increases. And then I offered him like like half of that or some, some ridiculously low price, right? And he hemmed and hawed, and I had cash money, of course. I always dealt in cash. And he hemmed and hawed, and I started to leave, and he kept trying to get me to come up a little bit or whatever. And I said, nah, that's okay. I really don't need it anyway. But, but here's the cash if you do want to do a deal. And he finally just shook his head and kind of cussed under his lips a little bit and, and said, all right, I'll do the deal. And so I got that thing. It was the first day date that I had with a uh, hidden class bracelet. The one that I had, the yellow gold one that I had previous to that, had the conventional clasp. And uh, that had a lot of stretch in the bracelet, had a lot of wear. The this, this white gold one was brand new, right? So I wore it for a while. I wore the brand new one for a while, and I actually sold it to John Winkler, who was the owner of Capital Porsche Audi. They went out of business. They went bankrupt, basically, went out of business. But I sold it to him for cash. I guess he wanted to channel some of the cash into something else, right, before he, before he blew everything up with the bankruptcy. And so he paid me cash, and I made a little bit of money on that watch. It didn't make that much, but I made a little bit of money on that watch and got out of it, thank God. So um, let's see here. Uh, 
Uh, da -da. I never knew watches could grow on you after the purchase or it might just be GS. Yeah, GS is due because as you continue to study them, you keep noticing cool things about them. They do kind of grow on you. Yeah. Anything that's really high quality, like my Lucchese boots, for example. Um, every time I wear them and every time I kind of clean them up and study them and so on, I'm looking at the stitching and everything and the, just the quality at least of the pairs that I have. They're, by the way, Lucchese makes several different quality levels of boots. So don't confuse one of their entry-level boots with their custom-grade boots. But anyway, I digress. When you look at anything like that that's really high quality, like, for example, my, my Timeless Razors, right? The more you study something that's just really well done, you just keep getting more and more impressed by it. Now, if something is marginal, the opposite is true. You keep noticing things that are wrong with it, and you're like, eh, you know, why did I, why did I buy that? Uh, has Lance bought a Rolex yet, Eduardo? I don't think so. And Robert says, hey, Craig, I'm a young guy, so I don't have the coin for a gold stunner yet, but I'm thinking of the faux pay. Do you think it's ugly if I wear the faux pay with a steel watch? Steve does it all the time. <clears throat> no, I think you could absolutely do it. And if you do decide to get a faux pay, I would definitely get a price from Steve and tell him you're a fan of the channel and he will, he will sharpen his pencil. No, I think it would look cool. And, and the thing is, no maintenance. No servicing, no, you know, there are some benefits to having the faux pay. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, those modern Daytona dials are not good for legibility. Well, anytime you have a, the additional complication of the stopwatch functionality, you know, you're, you're going to have, um, it's going to be harder to read, right? Just busier. Uh, exactly. Their history and attention to detail made it for me, Sebastian. Uh, that's very true. I contemplate purchases too. And here's the other thing. This is another thing. I, we took some pictures of, um, Brianna's boots and I, I put them up on the Lucchese uh, uh, group on Facebook, L Lucchese, what's the name of the group? Anyway, it's one of the more popular Lucchese groups. Uh, and I was noticing some of the other posts in there. And as I was noticing this guy made a post that he bought some boots <clears throat> and, and when they arrived, he wasn't impressed with the quality. They, they weren't what he expected. And as they dug deeper, as some of the people asked questions and there were some replies to his comment and so on and so forth, turns out that he went to a retail place that sells Lucchese's and he looked at Lucchese boots. He saw a touch and felt and looked and examined the boot. And then he went and he bought what he thought was the same boot online and got a quote a good deal right well what he ended up buying was the made in mexico lower line lucchese boots which are okay but they're not to the standards of the custom not custom they call it classic the classic which is the higher end boot that they still make in the usa and i think they make a couple of levels of boots even in the usa by the way i don't think they're all created equal i think the the classic is the top of the line right now and in the olden days, back in the day, when I got mine, they were pretty much all at that quality level, right? You couldn't get a lousy Lucchese boot if you tried, right? They were all high quality, as far as I recall. Now, you could get different skins and things like that, but they were all made in the USA and all pretty much all that. When they, when they made them in um, San Antonio, the original factory. So, anyway, make a long story short, he bought a lower-end boot and thought that he was buying the higher-end boot. 
And so Lucchese didn't do anything wrong. That Lucchese has different lines of quality that, you know, you can, if you want to buy a cheap boot, you can buy a cheap boot. If you want to buy a really nice one, you can buy a really nice one, but you're going to have to pay more for the really nice boot. He just thought he was going to get a deal by buying it online, and uh, yeah, he ended up getting a lesser boot. Um, most good big companies have several tiers of products. Uh, let's see. Hey, Craig, I have tons of Brooks Brothers uh, Supima cotton made in Malaysia. I find they're good quality. How do they compare with the Made in USA? FYI, the Chinese shirts are trash. Okay. I prefer the Made in USA original Brooks Brothers sh shirts back in the day when they had more fabric in them, more fabric in the sleeves and everything. Some people don't like that look. I prefer it. So, yeah, I much prefer, I'll tell you, my favorite shirts, off the rack, not custom made, my favorite shirts are probably Kenneth Gordon, the ones that were made in the USA. They do have some that are made overseas now, but for the vast majority of their life, they were made in the USA. Kenneth Gordon and uh, Gitman Brothers. But I would say Kenneth Gordon is number one. Maybe the Brooks Brothers shirts that are made in the USA are number two, and maybe Gitman Brothers number three, just because the Gitman Brothers, the cut isn't quite... Isn't, they're all three very good, but if I had to rate them, I would say Kenneth Gordon first, Brooks Brothers made in the USA second, and then, Ken, and then um, Gitman Brothers third. <clears throat> By the way, you can find all three of those sometimes in mint condition on eBay for sale at a deal. Just figure out what your size is that you need and so do a search on eBay and then save that search. And then you'll get an email when, when something comes up that's available. For example, <clears throat> I'd saved Lucchese size 8B, 8B as in boy, USA boot. And, and, uh, and eBay. And so I got an email this morning, a pair of eel skin, pretty nice looking Lucchese's. That's Brianna's size, by the way. And I looked at them and I showed them to her, but, and I was on the fence as to whether or not to buy them or not. They were asking 175 bucks for the pair. And they were made in, in the original, uh, San Jose factory, right? And so they were the real deal. But I decided not to lock and load on them because the problem with eel skin is they put eel skin over top of the cowhide because it's real thin and there's multiple seams. And although these were in really good condition considering they were made in San Jose, so they're like 30 years old, they're, they were in beautiful condition. They're still that old. And when you treat the eel skin, it doesn't get through to the leather underneath. So there's no way to treat the leather underneath. So leather could be getting dry or whatever, and you don't know, right? So I, I didn't lock and load. But that was a perfect example where if that was something that was really desirable, I could have locked and loaded and bought it right away. Somebody did end up buying them within like 15 minutes of me getting that notification. Somebody else did act on it and bought them. Uh, but, uh, that's the way I snagged her ostrich boots that she has that are black cherry ostrich that are absolutely gorgeous and her snakeskin boots. And those were made in San Jose. They're, they're, they're both high end, uh, you know, classic grade boots. Uh, I snagged both of those on eBay and both of them are in fantastic condition. She absolutely loves them. So yeah, if you're, if you're quick, if you act fast, if you save a search and then you get that notification, if that's a buy it now item and it's a really good price, you got to jump on it right away because somebody else will jump on it if you don't. So just FYI. Um, and you can get things like Bill's khakis on there. I've referred a friend. I have plenty of pairs. I have like a dozen pairs. So I need another pair of Bill's khakis like I need a whole head. But a friend of mine, I told him, I said, you're buying these, these lousy khakis like dockers and stuff that are just absolute garbage right 
I said, you could get yourself a pair of Bill's khakis for the same price or less on eBay. And so I turned him on to it, and he's, able to, he's been able to get a couple pairs. But, yeah, that, that's the way to do all of that. Um, you got to do what you got to do these days, folks. Some of these things are hard, getting hard to find. I saw that watch that Bree has at Little Treasury. Steve showed it to me when it arrived. I almost bought it. The case back screws put me off. I want to screw down case back and not held by the screws. Yeah, I think that every three years you're going to open those to put a battery in. I think it's going to be fine. I think it'll be fine. <clears throat> and it could be repaired if one of those got stripped or something like that. It is something that could be repaired. Uh, but I don't, I think if you're careful when you do the battery changes, I think it'll be fine. <clears throat> but I hear what you're saying, but beautiful watch. Yep, eBay, save search feature is awesome, says Robert. He's in the house. He, he's, he's a sharp cookie. Uh, have you ever bought a really cheap watch and thought it was, thought like it was better than expected? I got recommended to buy a beater watch and ended up with an Orient Ray to really nice watch. The the lower price watches that I have tried in the past, and I've tried them, you know, I, I, you know, Steinhardt's, you know, different watches. I have reviews here on the channel. I just never found anything that I really liked, like a high end, you know, like a high end uh, watch, either Rolex or Grand Seiko or whatever. Just never found anything that could really get the job done in my opinion, for me, I just wasn't happy with them. So I ended up, I went through that phase, ended up selling them all. Even my Omega, I wore it for a number of years. I mean, it just never really was quite the same. <clears throat> so let's see. Uh, Leon, I don't know, unless you are in a 1980s hair, hair metal band eel skin and snake skin seems to look out of place these looked pretty classy though these looked pretty nice lucchese can do some of those exotic skins in such a way that they don't really look that tacky they can do both they can also do some that are very tacky right so you gotta look at what you gotta look at uh let's see um robert says hey craig what is the diameter of your faux pay okay i had it up here if you want to see all the specs, go to uh, this article on area guides, areaguides.com slash faux pay. Um, and this is uh, the whole write up on it. It's areaguides.com slash faux pay. And you can see here mine is 36.30 grams, which is 1.28 ounces. And it is eight millimeter. It is the large size, and the diameter is eight millimeter. So <clears throat> that's what this one is. And the size is going to de depend on the size of your wrist. Whether you get a large or medium or whatever. And I would talk to Steve and Tell him the size of your wrist, and he can counsel you as to what size of faux pay you really should get. Kyle's in the house. Oh, boy. Talk about a man making moves, making things happen. Impressive. Impressive young man. Cheat Town's in the house. Some low and low watches are very good, but the problem comes from owning multiple ones. Don't do that, save for a Rolex or a GS. Good point. Leon's in house. Casio makes a good quality, low price watch. I'm wearing one. I spent six dollars on it at the thrift store early this week. I'm enjoying it more than my Rolex right now. Whoa! There you go. Maybe sell that Rolex and uh, maybe buy some Bitcoin. Not financial advice on this channel, but Bitcoin could be getting ready for a run, a run <clears throat> that could give some of us a nosebleed. Let's see, how's the James Cameron treating you, Kyle? It's down the road. He now has a sub 
Mariner, a Rolex Submariner. And I'm not going to say a Rolex Submariner no date because a Rolex Submariner doesn't have a date. Only the Rolex Submariner date has a date. So there you go. Use the proper terminology on this show. At least back in the day, that was always the terminology. I don't know if they've changed it. It was Rolex Submariner and then a Rolex Submariner date. Uh, Craig, how often do you drink soda pop? Never. I don't ever drink soda. Well, I lied. If I go to a nice restaurant, like when I went with uh, Steve and Carlos to that nice restaurant with Linda, and we had a nice, very expensive meal. Thank you, Steve. They're all drinking liquor, so I had a Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola on the rocks. So I splurged and had a Coca-Cola on the rocks and let them drink their liquor. And that was my drink, if you will. <clears throat> so that's the exception. I will do it at something like that. And let's see. <clears throat> the Submariner 41. Yes. And she sounds laughing. He says, the three... Best cheap watch brands are Orient, Citizen, and Casio. I prefer uh, seltzer, water, to soda. There you go. I, I cannot tell a lie. I like a good old Coca-Cola on the rocks. I could drink them all day long. I mean, you know, my gosh, it's sugar water. I mean, you know, it's not the like. So, But we just because we like doing something doesn't mean we do it all the time. We have to use a little bit of self-discipline, right? Now, let's see what Bitcoin is doing this moment. Let's check in on on the Bitcoin. We'll go back to the 231 while we load this in. <clears throat> I don't know if this is up to date or not. Let me refresh this page before I cut to it. I don't want to give you guys inaccurate information. Of course, my browser's acting real slow. I guess we can assume that's correct. Is that correct? 19, oh, here it is refreshing. We'll find out here in a jiffy. Let's see here. Uh, yeah, there it is. 19,191. Longer we stay over 19,000 like this, that is very, as they would say, very bullish, as the bulls would say. <clears throat> Rolex blurs the lines on the watches. They have a Rolex day chest with a non-fluted bezel. They should have called it Oyster Petrol Date. And a date chest without a fluted bezel is not a date chest. Well, the date chest was, you know... The, they had the date, and they wasn't that the date, the quick change date function. Wasn't that what the claim to fame was for the date just? Was the the quick change date function? Maybe some Rolex historians can chime in. Like the Coke, but preferably with lime juice and rum in it. <laughs> yeah, I just never been a drinker. I mean, I drank a little bit in school, and you know, but yeah. I just never really got into it. Uh, let's see. Heck, I bought a ice crusher last month. I'm making snow cones left and right. There you go. A drunken Craig would probably be a lot like Archie, sweaty, angry, and swearing. N I hope not. I hope not. Uh, <laughs> All right. Well, on that note, I think we're going to wrap this puppy up. We've been going for an hour. This was an emergency broadcast that started at 3.30. Let's look at the, uh, let's do a close-up here. And that was the subject of the, of the um, intervention that we had. An intervention that we had was the 002. Somebody said that the 002 was absolutely not a stunner. Not a stunner. And I have to disagree. I have to respectfully disagree with that. Okay, so um, the weirdest OP I've seen so far is the Rolex Zephyr. 
The Oish Spiritual Date is a 34 millimeter date just. They, they still call it that. Uh, Leon, I stand by my post. A date just without a fluted bezel is not a date just. Fluted bezel is iconic and the first thing that comes to mind with a date just. Well, here's the thing. <clears throat> There's also an advantage to the uh, fluted bezel. It doesn't show any scratches. It just wears down over time, right? It just wears down because it's either white gold or yellow gold. It just slowly wears down, but it doesn't show any scratches. You'll get scratches on the case and all that, but the bezel won't, won't show any scratches. Whereas a, a smooth bezel on a day chest, that's a scratch magnet. So if people care about that sort of thing, that's something to think about. All right, we're going to let it go here. I'm going to eat something. Maybe now that Cl Clive is not... Maybe now that Clive is not welcome on AC3's channel, he can make a reappearance here. They haven't kissed and made up yet? I'm surprised. What about a day date with an oyster bracelet? What do you call it? I've seen a few. They, they've been around. There's been a few, but that would be a serious mistake to get a day date with an oyster bracelet. I wouldn't mind a day date with a Jubilee bracelet, but oyster you'd be going you'd be hustling backwards big time on that all right thank you folks for hanging out and and helping me with this intervention and we will see you guys next time